Today we're going to update on the Red Sea Nano Rock Flower Tank. What's going on guys? Devin from Reef Dudes. Now it's been a while since I've done an update on the Rock Flower Tank. I actually thought it would have been moved all to the new tank by now, but some little delays here and there, so I figure we'll sneak in one more last update on the Rock Flower Tank. So let's take a look at the tank. Now the tank itself is growing really well. I did have some more frag tanks and stuff in here for a while. I did take those out. Um, on here, for the light, you'll see a little bit different. I was testing out the little Noobshik K7. Uh, so far, so good for... It's kind of a pretty awesome little budget light. And we will dig into that one a little later. As for the tank itself, I did have some more frag racks and stuff. Those have now moved to the lagoon. If we look down, Zoas, everything have been thriving in here. And I do have a ton of rock flowers. So I definitely had a little bit of a rock flower obsession, which I still do. I do love them. And something I saw pop up a few times lately kind of made me laugh was someone was saying that they removed the rock flowers because they were worried about eating their fish. Now that's one thing that I can't say I've ever seen a rock flower eat a fish, at least not a happy, healthy one. Maybe something fish already bit the dust and I could see it happening. Um, now I have a lot of rock flowers in here. I'm going to guess 40 to 50. And there's a purple fire fish, um, a madron dragonette, and a Royal Gamma, and they have all been in here for over a year, fine, happy, everyone's been good. So I definitely don't think that there is any issue with having rock flowers and fish in the same tank. So you, this guy constantly goes random, no issue. So I, I can't say it's not possible. I think a healthy fish would be 100% safe, but in my experience, there's been zero issues with that one. Love all those flowers. So I think my plan for all the rock flowers is I'm gonna put take uh, maybe six or so of my favorites and put them into the new water rocks peninsula so likely probably those two the nice pink and yellow that little red to greeny whatever bullseye a few different ones so i'm gonna take my favorites and they're gonna go in the peninsula and the rest are gonna go all in the front of the lagoon tank now all the a cans from the lagoon tank which are currently in the front are going to be going on to my little overhangy thing in the water box tank that's gonna give me lots of room to put in my little rock flower garden which i think should look pretty cool now the majority of the flowers have stayed on the sand bed, but you can see a few did climb up the rocks. So I got two there, I got another guy there, another little baby over here. But overall, for the most part, they have stayed on the sand bed. I got one more that climbed up right up there. Now as for the babies, we definitely have a few babies. Like that little guy was a baby born in the tank. That little green one was born in the tank. There was a couple more that were hanging right around here. Don't know if we'll be able to see them right now, but I think there's a little guy there. I'm pretty sure he was tank born. And there's been a few new babies lately. So if you look right there on the rock, got a nice little yellowy type of one. So he's a nice new baby that's been in there. There's another little guy right there on the glass. You can kind of see it. And if you've got the cool purple one right beside it, there's another little baby there. So there's definitely a few kind of in the works, which is really cool. My goal was always to try and breed rock flowers and I've seen it start to happen naturally. It's super duper cool. Now, if you have rock flowers, sexy shrimp are always super cool to have. Uh, I do have two in here. So they basically live in this little section of the tank on the flowers. And they're little model citizens. Um, hopefully these guys will make it in the lagoon. I do have two bank eye cardinals in there, so that is a little bit of a risk. But they tend to stick more to kind of the back side of the tank. So hopefully they leave the front little sexy shrimp alone in the front. And if they do last long term, we'll definitely add a few more because these guys are super cool. It's always kind of fun to see the, the micro life in the tank. Now if you watch them, you kind of wonder why they're called the sexy shrimp. They shake the little butts in the air like that and they do a kind of little dance and it's kind of like got their sexy shrimp name. Now with rock flowers, the top down is always the best view. This guy's one I get asked a lot about too. This is a fathead dendro. Um, they're kind of hard to find. I started with one head a while back. And at one point I almost started to lose him. And luckily there's a little baby that kind of buttered off. So he's starting to come back now. And I got a few different heads. So really excited about that because that is a really cool coral. Kind of like a sun coral, but it's open a lot more. It's a lot easier to feed and generally a lot more successful and less finicky. Now I was previously running the e-coral controller on this tank and I have since moved it over to the lagoon tank. 
Um, a lot of people have been asking for an update on that one, and the controller itself has been pretty solid. I did have the pH probe die on me, so that one I do need to replace, but aside from that, it's been working well. Um, I still do have the Ecoral doser running on this system though, and that doses a couple mil a day just to kind of keep the calcium elk mag all in check. For the auto top off, I'm using the little auto XP one, the little nano guy, and that one works very well, super tiny little magnet on the back. And you can kind of see the dosing tube right there. My dosing lines, the auto top off, the little magnet will be just hiding down there. And I still do have a couple of extra probes on, I gotta move over. Um, as for the skimmer, I did remove the skimmer on this tank. I just find doing a little, small little water change gives you more benefit. Um, I did also remove the sock and just use a bit of this polyfill stuff on the back. And those of you who haven't used it before, this is kind of like polyfill. I buy this at a fabric store by the meter. Fairly inexpensive and also rip off a little chunk and put that over top of the overflow. That works pretty well for particles. Every couple of weeks I'll just toss it and throw in a new little chunk of it. Quick overview some of the corals. This big guy in the back is a Miyagi Tort. The one in right there in the front, I believe, is a blue stag. We got some sunny D's, Armor God, uh, Palmer's Blue Millie. That's supposed to be pink Cadillac. It's completely morphed to different colors, though, so that's highly questionable. Uh, could be the nutrient level, something else. That's some kind of a blue encruster. That one I do not know, but it's a kind of a really cool blue green stag. This guy is pink lemonade, I believe. We got the rainbow Montipora. Coming over to the front, you got our yellow zoas, which are the scrambled eggs, and the yellow and purple one are Jason Fox acid reflux. Um, over there, we have our outer chaos rock flower. That guy is purple bonsai. Coming down to the bottom, rock flowers and more rock flowers. Got kind of the zebra pinstripey guys. We got some bullseyes. We've got some splatters, so lots of different ones. Um, that, so I believe it was like Jugo Juice or Jungle Juice or something like that. Um, this guy is a Dragon Soul Torch. So overall, it's actually been a very easy Nano to keep. A lot of people kind of had some misconception that Nanos can be harder or trickier, but honestly, it's been easy. Like, on this tank, it does dose a couple mils a day, but aside from that, I do a five gallon water change once a week-ish, maybe, you know, if I'm slacking some weeks, once every other week. That's all I do for maintenance on this tank. It's extremely easy to maintain it. Um, mi minimal gear, like, other than the auto top-off. For flow, I got the Nero 5. We have the XP Aqua auto top-off and the Ecoral Doser. So it's a pretty simple little system, and there really isn't much to maintaining it. I do a five-gallon water change every week or two, and that's basically it. Uh, when I'm extra motivated, I try and do weekly. Sometimes if I happen to miss a week or something, you know, it could be every other week. But overall, it's just a really easy little nano to take care of. It's kind of perfect if you're being like a bit of an apartment reefer or, you know, want something in the bedroom or office, something small that's really easy to maintain. So yeah, overall, it's been an awesome little tank. And I'm kind of sad to move it all. I don't really want to touch it because it looks so awesome now. But got to do what you got to do when you're moving. So hopefully once I move the tank, the rock flowers, everything will still be happy enough to keep spawning, but exciting new chapter in the upgrades of reef tanks. Now, as always guys, if you enjoyed this, hit that like button. If you're new, make sure you subscribe. And if you have any questions, hit me up in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer and help you guys out. All right guys, I will see you guys on the next update.